Hey YouTube, it's Nicole here on this Sunday night. I hope you guys are doing great out there and welcome to Nicole's View. So I was meaning to speak on this um, on the day of the actual 25th anniversary of the Rodney King case and the riots that followed. And as you guys know, it has been 25 years since the riots happened, but actually it's been 26 um, since the official, you know, beating that these race soldiers did to Mr. King. Um, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget when it happened. If you're old enough to remember, or even if you were not alive, I mean, we now have the pictures, the video, <laughs> everything, articles, you name it, books. You can definitely research on this case about Mr. King. And he of course, has passed away since. I think it's been like, what, about three years or so since he's been deceased, Mr. Rodney King, where he was apparently found dead in a pool, like he drowned to death. Um, but 26 years ago, man, I was seven years old when this happened. My mom was expecting my little sister, my youngest sister at the time, in March of 1991. And I just remember my parents watching like the local news, the national news, and just sitting there. And I'll never forget how the media just played that tape over and over and over. And I remember my mom and my dad just saying, they did not have to beat that man like that. And as you know, I'm seven years old and I'm seeing it too. And you're just like, they are serious. They're, they're, police can do that? they can actually beat someone like that? Like, what did he do to deserve to be beat like a slave? You know, at that time, you know, I'm seven going on eight and you see this as a child and it traumatizes you. It put it puts in your head that, oh my God, is that what cops do on the, on the norm on, on a regular basis? I mean, man, when this hit, it hit like, an earthquake. I mean, you could not watch the news when this happened and everyone is outraged by it from anyone you can think of from the top all the way to the bottom. Everyone was just sickened by it. And many people who lived in LA and that part during that time, they predicted this was hap it would happen. They knew that eventually something was going to set this all on fire. LA at that time had been infested with, you have poverty, you have, you know, gang violence, you have the drugs with the with crack cocaine and the whole, it was just, it was just bound to blow up. And then to top it off, you have police brutality on top of all of it. So for the people who lived there at the time, it was just a matter of time before this would happen. And I was looking at the old footage of this and just thinking, I remember this. This is crazy how, you know, it all went down. In my personal opinion, when they changed the venue from LA to Simi Valley, that basically was white supremacy's way of letting these four race soldier cops get off. That's what they did. They basically went from an area that's majority, you know, very heavily diverse, mixed with people to nearly an all white <laughs> area where they could let these uh, devils get off. And I mean, the writing was on the wall. And one of the lawyers or prosecutors who was black at the time said that some of the jurors said that Rodney King deserved what he got. And Whatever he did, not listening, he was deserved to be beat. Basically, those jurors who let those four co cops get off, they had the mentality of a slave master, okay? Let's just call it what it is. They, they said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He deserved to get beat like a slave. He didn't listen to his masters. So that's what he get. And I, I also feel when the media repeatedly show this over and over and over, I think many people got desensitized to it. They felt like, okay, 
we've seen it now it doesn't affect us as much as you've seen it once or twice you know when you see it on a loop i think over time and for we saw it for a loop over a year until the you know case came to an end in april of 1992 so people became desensitized and then you know if you have these white supremacist jurors you know they are already going to believe that he deserved it and then they're seeing the video over and over and over so it's not that big of a shock it's not that big of a you know oh my god versus just seeing it for the first time so when that all happened the flame was lit and boom la was just on fire basically people were angry they didn't know how else to express themselves and we also have to remember um that with rodney king there was also another case of i want to say her name is latasha harlins if i'm saying that right and before even the whole rodney king incident happened I want to say she was 12 years old. I should have this information up, but I'm going off of my, off the top of my head. So anyone in the comment section can correct me if I'm off or anything. But for the most part, we all saw the grainy video footage of Latasha Harling being murdered in a convenience store that was Korean run. And it was basically, she thought that this young girl was stealing orange juice. And in fact, that wasn't what was going on. She was trying to um, purchase it and somehow this lady got it mixed up thinking this girl was going to steal and when the lady who first attempted to hit her or, or attack her Latasha struck back she hit her back and before you know it the lady Korean owner shot the girl as she turned around in back of her head in the back of her head like she was a dog and so people tend to kind of forget that case. And you have that and then Rodney King right after that. And how the Korean shop owner, how she just got off the, the her, you know, her convenience store. And literally, no one should have been surprised by these riots. No one. If you know the history, you would know that this was bound to happen. And honestly, I don't even like to call it riots. It is an uprising. People got fed up. They got sick and tired. Now, was it necessarily okay? No. But when you have an uprising, there's going to be mayhem. There's going to be some pretty evil stuff. Some sick stuff is going to go down. Some lives are going to be lost. And that was the sad part in all of it. There were lives lost. They say anywhere between 50 to 60 people uh, were killed, you know, when all these riots went down. A lot, a lot of them due to... Um, either fires or whatnot, but it's still sad that it had to get to that point. Eventually, when you're not listening to the people, the people are going to, you know, lash out. And that's what happened. And, you know, eventually, after a few days of the rioting, it all calmed down and folks, um, had to calm down because they they brought in the big guns they brought in they brought in the army and all that kind of stuff and you guys know when they come in the show's over so uh bush senior at the time they got it all together and um they put it to an end they came in in those tanks and <laughs> it was a done deal at that point but yeah, it's just interesting when you go down memory lane thinking about this and how those cops got off and how they were hugging each other and, you know, celebrating and knowing that white supremacy had their back. And literally that just, that was it. That was a fuse. People were, was not having it. And I mean, I look at these still images and I just think to myself, this man, regardless of him speeding, yes, it was wrong. Yes, he was drunk at the time. But that man was beat just when he would describe all the injuries he suffered from that. Come on. I mean, come on. I'll never. This will always be ingrained in my in my head. Always. I mean, look at how they beat that man. 
I mean, just literally just beat him as if he was not human, as if he were an animal that deserved to be beat. And so today in LA, they had like a peace um, march in remembrance of the riots 25 years ago in Los Angeles today. And um, I'm reading this from the Daily Mail and it says Los Angeles Pe Peace Parade marks Okay, now this stupid ad wants to cover it, so and I can't X out of it. But anyway, Los Angeles had a big um, peace rally. Here we go. March, um, on, on April 29th, 1992, the Rodney King riots erupted in South Los Angeles. The event was sparked by the acquittal of four white police officers who beat a black motorist on video, fueling tensions towards law enforcement. And when you think today, has anything really changed? some things have changed instead of having a video camera everyone has cell phones and on those cell phones are videos and now anyone can film at any given point of any type of injustice ha happening and now it's like there are Rodney Kings literally once a month and it's now become the norm you get what I'm saying and some don't even get to live like Rodney King lived or survived. So just think about that. Just think about how back in the day we didn't have the cell phones or if you did have them, you had the big block <laughs> cell phones, but you didn't have it where you had video and all the fancy stuff. You just had to get have a you know nice little video camera and that's how this was caught on camera. And many thought like, okay, finally they've been exposed, but it doesn't matter if they've been exposed they still had the backing of white supremacy. And so the article goes on to say that 25 years ago, a jury acquitted four white, white police officers in the beating of black motorist Rodney King, sparking looting and violence that would turn into one of the deadliest race riots in American history. On Saturday, hundreds of people in Los Angeles marked the anniversary of the tumultuous event with marches advocating peace and hope. Future Fest began at Florence and Normandy Avenues, the South Los Angeles intersection where rioting erupted and was followed by a community festival. So here are some of the, the pictures from the um, parade on Saturday. I said it was today. It was actually Saturday. So here are some of the pictures and whatnot. And um, yeah, I don't know how to feel about this. I mean, that's all nice and well. You know, but we know, we just, we know how things really haven't changed for the better. Some things have, but for the most part, I don't think so, you know? And I see these photos of, you know, these people rejoicing in it, and that's fine and well. I'm glad it was nice and peaceful and whatnot, but I mean there had to be some some type of change you know and look at this <laughs> she's in the store they were just getting everything man i remember this this was what a time to be alive back then but yeah um pretty interesting that all these years later you look back at this and you think has things really changed? Have they really? And I saw a video about, you know, they were talking about South uh, Los Angeles, how it is today. And although they say the murder rate is down and they're doing more with um, bringing in jobs and whatnot, I mean, you can still see the, you know, remnants of what happened there. And yeah, I mean, we know that things then were were just horrible, deplorable at how people were treated there. So I just hope that over time they continue to progress there and whatnot. And also I meant to add that uh, Spike Lee did a... Um, I don't want to say it was not a documentary, but it was like a spoken poem type dedication to Rodney King. And he made it into like a, a special that's airing on Netflix right now. 
I am definitely going to check it out and um, and see what, it, what it's all about. But apparently it's supposed to be really good and whatnot. So definitely check that out. Um, I'm, I'll most likely do a review on that too as well. So yeah, I just wanted to talk about that in the Rodney King riots in 25, 26 years later. And yeah, where were you when this happened? Were you alive? <laughs> were you born? Um, and what did you think? What did you think when you saw this, the beating and then the after effects of how the jury um, let these race soldiers go and the riots that followed? What did you guys think? Um, I'd love to know, you know, what you thought and whatnot. So yeah, yeah. Uh, rest in peace to Rodney King. You know, over time, he had a lot of issues healing from this. I remember seeing specials on it where they said he just could never truly recover. He would have nightmares. He never truly got over it. He never got over it, how they beat him really just to be doing it and because he was black. I mean, let's get be real. They beat him like a runaway slave. And he had his ups and downs and he was still apparently at one point still dealing with alcohol, alcoholism and whatnot. And, you know, he tried to his best to deal with it, you know, and sadly, like I said earlier, he was found dead in I want to say either his wife's or girlfriend's swimming pool and whatnot. So in the end, he had a very, you know, sad ending, but it's a lesson to be learned from Rodney King. You know, it's such a lesson to be learned. And um, yeah, it's just what a story, what a, you know, what a time to be alive back then and whatnot. So yeah, um, there you go. So I love to hear your comments, like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.